product photography is one of my all time favorite things to do because there is so much to do in a small space and you don't have to go anywhere. So today we're going shopping at an antique shop and I'm going to shoot these new products from Clocks and Colors and yours truly. And we're gonna see what it would look like going through the entire process making campaign photos and launch photos of these new items right to the website for sale and you're coming along for the whole thing. So today we are shooting jewelry, we're shooting a pendant. And then the ring we'll be shooting is this one here that I have been <laughs> fooling around with on my videos and you've been seeing it on the channel. I always, always start with the theme. So being that the theme is the Pete's Pirate Life brand that is rustic, that is texture, that is rope and things that feel like they were found on a ship. They were found in an old antique shop somewhere. So that's exactly where we started. Now, all the props aside, all the things you saw that we purchased from the antique shop, which if you didn't clue in earlier, that is my favorite place to buy props for photos to supplement whatever product that you are shooting. I think they work so well. They pair so nicely depending on what you get. <laughs> There's literally everything for anything at an antique shop. Found this old antique shop, hadn't been to this one before, which was exciting because all the pickings would be fresh and fresh they were. I came away with this giant, I'm gonna call it a pirate chest. Uh, the second I walked in the door, I saw it and I was like, yup. Now the reason I bought this was twofold. One, it looks incredible. Two, I can shoot inside it. Three, I can actually shoot on top of it and use the surface as a background itself. It's just kind of the gift that keeps on giving. So those are the things I think about when I'm trying to find antiques and things that I can actually shoot with. I lied, there's actually a fourth reason I bought this trunk and it lies under the lid. Look at that, Russian newspaper or something. How many times have you heard me talk about texture? A ring? sitting on this. Mm. It's like you can taste the photos. You can feel the photos. Lou from Unbox Therapy was looking through the Pete's Pirate Life account. He's like, I can smell this page. And that description of the of like the feed is exactly the vibe I'm going for. So that just kind of solidified in my head like, yes, okay, this is working. Like people are getting what I'm putting out there. But beyond set dressing, lighting is also the most important aspect. Now for this shoot, I had an Aperture 300D with a light dome top down. That top down light gives you a nice soft umbrella. Now that's good, but sometimes that soft umbrella just lights everything too evenly. And I don't want everything lit so evenly because it makes it look flat sometimes. There's no dimension, there's no mood, there's no character or mystery or anything like that, especially with the items I bought and the ring that I was shooting. It needs a bit of edge, it needs a bit of mystery. It's a skull and crossbones for goodness sakes. Well, they're actually cross knives, but it needs that attitude. Okay, foam core. I got a little piece of gaff tape on the back. That piece of gaff tape is keeping these two things touching so the seam isn't like absolutely just complete trash. Again, a little piece of gaff tape, fold it up, that just stops. It's little things like that that I love. Look, you got it on that side too. It's like that saves so much time trying to keep the background from moving over and over and over. All I need this to do is be nothing space. So I think we start building out the set. Okay. You're right there. The beauty of this whole thing, you can shift this around so many different ways and it's gonna look, it's gonna look different every time. But look, look at that. Like that looks so cool already. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna bring the light down a little bit. Looks good. It's just a bit too evenly lit right now. It needs a little more attitude. It needs a little more drama. Even flat light gives me no attitude. So by bringing that light forward over to the side and casting more of an angle, that opens up a little bit more shadow on one side. Now also introducing that nan light that gives me hue saturation options so I can cast a warm glow on the scene which complements the rusty lantern, the brown rope, the surface, everything sitting on. That color hue really adds to the entire scene. So now when we have that being side lit, plus a little bit of an angle on our main key light that's hanging over top, that's really what's going to give you the winning recipe here. 
I think it's important when you're doing this kind of thing too to like make sure you're getting a mix of both vertical and horizontal, especially if it's product photos, because you can be almost 100% sure it's going on a website, which if they're having a product page or they're gonna feature it on a banner, the first thing they're gonna say is, those vertical shots are sick, can you send me one in horizontal? And you're gonna go, oh, Instagram ruined that for me. I didn't do that. While I was shooting in frame, I was holding my camera several times, just looking at the back screen, moving the light to see where it would hit that piece of jewelry the best. You can't always just set everything up textbook style and there it is, a perfect photo. Sometimes you gotta hunt for those angles. You gotta shoot through different things, hang things in weird spots. You build the scene, then you play within the scene. Bam, oh, let's get some incense going. This is my little Misk Goods Co. incense holder. Give it to me now. By the way, this video is brought to you by Storyblocks. So this video is brought to you by Storyblocks, and if you don't know what Storyblocks is, you should. If you create things for the internet or create things at all within the realm of media, Storyblocks will help you make those projects easier. A massive library of assets when it comes to videos and photos and After Effects templates, Premiere Pro project templates, sound effects, music. If you need to spice up some titles, if you need a little bit of extra B-roll of something that you weren't able to capture when you were traveling and you need to go back and get that, that's where this asset proves so valuable to creators. And one of the nice things is it has unlimited downloads. You're not being capped with 25 things a month. It's unlimited for both personal and commercial projects. You don't have to worry about getting hit on weird licensing fees because it's covered as well. It's a scalable subscription, so you can choose whatever plan that works for you and meets your needs as you grow as a creator. So if you wanna look into Storyblocks as a potential tool in your creator kit, I've left the link in the top line of the description below so you don't even have to scroll. That's right. I'm just trying to make it easy. Like Storyblocks makes it easy. Was that too? That was good. I mean, that we should leave that in. That was fun. I think it's cute. That's a cute line. Is that weird to say? I build the scene. It looks good. I step back and I think to myself, what's the spice? What's the one thing I can shake on top of this meal that just makes it extra delicious? And for me, that was lighting the incense cone. That was gonna give me a long, slow burning smoke that I could just blow and have fill the space because the background was just black. I didn't want it to always be black. So adding a bit of that smoke into the atmosphere just gives that photo more of a fullness when you're looking at it instead of having nothing at all in the background. If you're shooting a hamburger, maybe the hamburger looks amazing and it's sitting on a nice platter, but maybe you've got some cilantro or some sort of jalapenos or something or a trail or a sprinkle of something that's messy on the foreground that leads to the hamburger, bacon crumbles, something like that would be the spice that just makes it that much better. If you're shooting pencil crayons or a pencil, what are you gonna do? You're gonna sharpen it and let those shavings dust all over the place because you want that extra grit, you want that spice. Or maybe you get creative and you break the tip off the pencil and you just, just position it a little bit off and write a message in there or something that just takes it a little bit higher. So for me, it was burning that little incense cone. I think that added a really nice touch. Just changed the little man light to give me a little hit on the front so that thing sparkles a little bit more. What's cool about doing this too is you can kind of like move around the scene. You don't have to stay in one place. I think giving yourself freedom to play within that scene is what's really gonna get you creative. Drape the pendant over the rope onto the brass key, move the nan light nice and close. Wide, it looks pretty good with some good contrast. Center that, maybe we'll go one off center. In this direction maybe, boom. Get a vertical in there, in case that's the Instagram banger we're looking for. Bam, secured. Maybe that looks like the lantern is glowing. That wafty. Now I started shooting with the 50 mil. I love the 1.2 aspect because it really gives me so much forgiveness when I'm trying to blow out the background and hide that seam in the foam core, for example. But the 100 mil macro is still my favorite product lens because it just gives you way more compression, which I just think aesthetically, it just looks better. There's, I think, three versions of it now. You can get the original EF non-L version, you can get the EF L version, and now they have the RF version available. I don't think I would use any other lenses personally if I was building out a scene. If I was trying to showcase 
a lifestyle aspect to a product, then I would want to widen things out. I'd want to go 2470 and play in those ranges or something like a 15 to 35, 16 to 35, whatever. That way I'm showing more of the environment so that I can give an idea to the customer what this product is, how it's used, what it looks like in real life. But because this is specifically about detail and just this item alone, not how it's used in real life, maybe I show it on a finger, it needs to be tight. It needs to be close up because the detail and the handmade craftsmanship, <laughs> wink, that's what I wanna show off. That's what makes this so special and unique. So that's where you wanna use something like 100 mil. Oh, you can see the reflection of the smoke in the ring. Mmm. Oh yeah, there needs to be B-roll of this. I'm switching over to 120 for a second. Please hold. Wait for this shot. Are you ready for this? Just finding weird angles, like with all these, I feel like I've said textures a thousand times, but with all these different unique things everywhere, it looks so cool. You know what I used to do a lot of when I was shooting photography? Dutch angle. Basically just holding your camera off kilter. It's not straight, it's not vertical, it's Dutch angle. And you can get some really interesting stuff that way. I used to do it all the time. I probably don't do it enough. What if I stack three of them? I got two extras, but I got mine. It says fly the flag all the way around the ring. So what if I stack them all? Now this ring says fly the flag. It's fly, right here it says the flag. Now you'll notice in the moment, I realized I had three of these and there's three words there. So if I was able to stack them, they would all say fly the flag in order. That's tinkering. And I think that's what's so much fun about product photography. You're not chasing a sunset. You're not waking up for sunrise. You're not getting rained out or the weather didn't cooperate. You control the whole scene. That is your personal Truman show. You can do whatever you want and you can take as long as you want and add and remove whatever you want. It's entirely under your control. Oh, that's the money shot right there. Oh, hello. Give me some of that. Oh, oh. please, please. Mm. Would she just love photography? I love it. I love it, Kirk. I'm loving it. <laughs> Can I get the key in there without any of the stack falling? A little. Oh, it gets better. Okay, I have one criticism of this. I do, I have one. These are too far back. They need to be forward like an inch and a half to just give me the slightest bit of depth on the background so that not everything is sharp. I just need a little bit of depth because I'm using a macro lens. It doesn't have to move far. How bad do you think all this incense is for me, Kirk? Just breathing it all in. It can't be good for you. Like, look, it's going directly into my face. Directly into my face. Just a nice close up detail shot. Tons of texture. Bam, bam, bam. This little scene, this little scene, I'm so stoked on it. Wow. So that is what we came up with. I think they suit the grid perfectly. Here's what it looks like on the pirate grid. It looks great, very, very excited. The pendant looks amazing as well. I will say within that photo shoot, I had an easier time shooting the ring because this pendant was reflecting really hard off the light, which means I probably had it a little too close to the source. So it was kind of blowing out a little bit of that brass inlay there. But both the pendant and the ring are available now if you go over to clocksandcolors.com. This is a Pete's Pirate Life X Clocks and Colors thing. So these will probably go pretty fast just because the pirate gang is, they are strong and they move quick. So if you want one of these rings, I would just pause this video and go do it right now. <laughs> so that's it for me guys. I hope you enjoyed another product photography video. That was a real life situation of me having to shoot this jewelry for a launch, which is happening today. So again, not to beat a dead horse, 
if you like it, and only if you like it, or you're a pirate fan and you're part of that gang. You know the website. This one is launching on clocksandcolors.com. That is also in the description. If you do pick up a piece, thank you so much. I appreciate you. If you didn't, that's cool too. I hope you learned something from this video in shooting product photography and that you find it as fun as I do. Hit the like button, subscribe, do all of the things. Have a great day. That's it. Fantastic. Have a fantastic day. I hope you have something good for dinner. You know, I hope you get home and you're stoked. You're like, oh, that's tonight? Mmm. Because that's always just, that's such a good round out of the day, you know? You're like, mmm, good day, good meal. Stay hydrated. BTS mode. A little bit of that BTS. Okay, we got some trifold foam core. Trifold because I don't want to do that with six pieces. I just want two. This stuff is uh, outrageously priced, massive ripoff. So if you go to Staples, uh, buy some because there's I don't know where else you get it. But shame on you, Staples, for charging so much money for nothing, literally nothing. It also took them an hour to find this. They were reaching for it. It fell off the other side onto a customer. <laughs> That's a true story. I can't even say it without laughing. The poor customer fell from the other side, from the very top. <laughs> it wasn't funny at all. I wasn't even there. <laughs> ah, I need a minute to compose myself. <laughs> that was for you, Vito. Legend has it, that guy's still looking for the foam core. He said it was out of stock, but the website said they had 10, so get client, get. <laughs> I can't. Ah. Uh.